What's up barbecue fans? Walk by the patio, my name's Jake. You're watching Rum and Cook. Today on the channel, we're talking about the top six mistakes that I see from Kamado Joe owners, whether you've had one for a while, maybe you're new to one, or maybe you're doing some research and you're interested in getting one. This video will be helpful. Now, if you're one of those people that's just looking and considering getting one, jump in. It will take you 10 cooks. You'll feel comfortable with it. There is a learning curve, but it's not as bad as you might think. And I'll tell you what, there is a ton of video content out there on YouTube that is super helpful. So don't hesitate. You're gonna really enjoy the food that comes off of one of these things. There's a lot of people that don't understand the benefits of a Kamado style cooker until they have one and play with one. First time they cook some food, and they're like, wow, it's pretty amazing. So let's get right into it with mistake number one. Mistake number one is not using a quality lump. Now, lump does two things. Number one, it provides flavor to whatever you're cooking. Right? Different lump has different flavor profiles. Some of it's got more of that charcoal taste, some of it is more mild, some of it's sweet. Uh, but the most important thing about lump is that a low quality lump doesn't have the quality control, it's not as dense, and what happens is you get temp swings, and if you're doing some high temp cooks like pizza or maybe a spatchcock chicken where it's gonna be sitting at an hour at 350, 400, what happens there is that less dense lump burns out super quick and you run out of steam, right? The other area you'll see that is maybe you're doing a reverse sear for an hour or so and then you've got a bunch of lump there, you turn it up, you wanna do a 600 degree sear and once it gets up to temperature, you throw your steaks on and it just fizzles out because it just runs out of power. Do not buy lump at the grocery store. There's a lot of brands out there. Here, I've got Kimono Joe's Big Block, been using it for years, it's good stuff. I've also used Fogo's Super Premium, and then they have a black bag that's just Fogo regular charcoal. Both of those are great. Jealous Devil has another one that's great as well. Now there are other brands that I have not used yet. Those are the three that I've used a ton of, a lot of experience with them, it's never let me down. They are a little bit more money than the others, but it's well worth it and it will last a lot longer. So even though it's more expensive up front, it will last longer so you get more value that way. Mistake number two, and this one you can recover from, but I figured I'd save you the hassle, and that's not starting your lump properly. Now over the last eight years, I've tried a lot of different things. Over here, I've got some of them. Here are the Komodo Joe starter cubes, squares. You can see them here. They are wax and you just kind of break them apart depending how many you want to use and away you go. Light them up, they'll burn for nine, 10 minutes. We also have, this is from Smokeware, but this is a little cage. You put these straw pieces in here, you open the cage, close the cage. What you do is you actually bury this below the lump. The cage gives it room for oxygen so the flame can burn and these will burn for about the same amount of time. You just light them, throw a bunch of lump on top and away you go. In my quest to speed things up a little bit, I picked up one of these guys and this is the Loof Lighter X. Uh, this guy here, the X means that it's battery powered. Here's the battery. And what happens here is this guy, you fire, it's got a little cage here. What you do is you touch this cage to your lump. It's got an element that heats up here. And then what happens is it's also got a fan. And once you get a little bit of embers going, the fan in here stokes that fire and gets it going. Now, over the years, one of my things that I've wanted to really improve upon is the fact that I didn't use my Komodo cooker during the week very often because it took too long to get started. And that's why I tried to look at other things. Now, the loof lighter doesn't quite work as good as I expected. I did a video on it. It actually worked really well. That was the first time I ever used it. And a couple of the times it worked well. The challenge with it is, is that the battery doesn't last very long. So it really only lasts three or four starts. And depending on how long you run that fan for is gonna depend on how long it's gonna last for. The challenge is, is that it's a lithium ion battery, right? So you don't wanna leave it on charge all the time. You wanna drain it a little bit or it will build a memory and then it's not gonna last very long. The batteries are not cheap, but on more than one occasion, I pushed it too long and I went to start my fire and the battery was dead. 
So if you're going to use one of those, I don't think I would get the rechargeable one. I would get the electric one and run a cord, which is exactly what I did not want to do. So I got the wireless one and it doesn't work the best. My two that I tend to use the most are these. You can buy these on Amazon in two packs, four packs, six packs, eight packs, and you've got these cubes in here or squares. Weber has got some white wax cubes. They all kind of work the same, but generally my rule of thumb here is if I'm going to be under 200 degrees or 250, I'll put one. Light it up a corner, put some charcoal around it. Now I usually will kind of put some on top and just give a little bit of air to breathe and one will be good up to about 250. If I'm going to go under 400, like 300, 250 to 400, I'm going to use two. I'm going to spread them out and get a little bit of a larger area lit. If I'm going pizza over 400, I will use three. So I'll go like these two here and one in front and I build myself a triangle and I get a large area going and then I can do some pizza. These are great. They work very, very well. This guy here is great gets the fire started really quick. I use it on my Komodo Joe, my offset, my wood fired oven, and my fire pit. Does an amazing job. It is hands down the fastest way to get your fire started. I do have a 10% discount code below. My challenge here is that it uses these one pound propane tanks and I have like 15 of these in my garage I gotta get rid of. I don't like that part of it. You can use a hose and an attachment to a 20 pound tank. The problem there is that then you got to carry on a 20 pound tank. I'm not real thrilled about that either. If you can deal with these, this is hands down the fastest way. Now, if you're going to be under say 350 or whatever, a minute is all you need. If you're going to do like 400, 450, I'd probably give it a minute, minute 15 or so, maybe a minute and a half tops, but this will get that pizza going and get you up to temperature super, super quick. When it comes down to all these options here, the only two that I recommend anymore are the Komodo Joe starter squares and the grill blazer. Number three, and this one's critical with some caveats. Number three is not letting your dome heat so properly. Now, these guys are made up of some thick material, right? If I put my fingers around there, we're about two inches thick. It takes a little while for that to get heat soaked. Why do we want to heat soaked? Well, where these shine and what makes these magical is how they work. So what happens is we get our fire going and then we get our temperature up here and then the dome starts to get heat into it, right? Once it's properly up to temperature, now instead of getting heat from the bottom only, now we're getting heat fired back from the dome. So you end up with 360 degree cooking. It cooks things faster, and I'll tell you what, if you do something like a spatchcock chicken on here, it is phenomenal. It's one of the early cooks you should do on one because when you do it right, you're gonna turn out some super juicy chicken, and it's gonna be full of flavor, and you're probably not gonna to wanna to buy chicken anywhere else anymore. It'll ruin it for you because it makes it that good. But the secret here is what you gotta do is you've gotta get this up to temperature. Let's say we're shooting for 300 degrees. Wait till your temperature here is at 300 degrees. At that point, this is gonna be cool, maybe warm to the touch. You wanna wait until this gets hot, right? Five, 10 seconds, don't wanna put your hand on it any longer than that. Then you know that this guy is properly heat soaked and now you can start to take care of that or take advantage of that radiant cooking. Now, the thing here is, is that there is another little caveat and recently I did it, my first brisket on the Komodo Joe and I broke the rules. The reason why I did that, I threw everything on cold, I fired it up and away I went. The reason for that is because it only takes about 30 minutes tops for the dome to get up to temperature and heat soaked. So out of a 10 hour cook, who cares? It's not that much time, but it's critical on that 45 minute to an hour cook, uh, maybe even you know, two hour cook. You really wanna get your dome pre preheated and heat soaked to take advantage of all the amazing cooking properties of a Kamado style cooker. Number four, if you get it right, it's gonna save you a lot of frustration. Number four is over correcting your vents and chasing your temps. Now we hear in barbecue all the time that temp swing is really bad for your meat 
and you don't turn out the same quality of product. Now for me personally, for many years, I started, actually for about 10 years, I had a little electric drum smoker. I couldn't adjust the temperature. It was at 250, away it went. Then I got a Weber Smoky Mountain. Then I got a Komodo Joe. Then I got a pellet grill. And all of those smokers and cookers really don't have a lot of fluctuation in them. So I kind of, for a long time, thought, you know, is there anything really to that? Then I got myself an offset. Learning an offset, lots of temp swings. What happens there is you don't render out the fat properly and you end up with a texture that is not nearly as enjoyable as when you nail it. So it really does make a difference. Now, when it comes to this guy, temp swings are not as varying, right? They, they happen, but it's not gonna be 100 degrees. Usually you're chasing it by 25 or 50, but you're doing it to yourself. It's super easy to do this once you figure it out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our bottom vent only an inch. Only adjust one air source. It makes it a lot easier that way. But when we look at this guy, we've got a couple, this is dirty on here, so it's probably not coming across the best, but we've got a line here, we've got a second line here and a third line here. Right, about halfway in, we're around 225. If we go up to that line, probably around 250, 275. Then we go up again, we're in that three to 325. Then we get up to around 350, then we get up to around 400, and then maybe 450, depending on how much lump you have uh, in the basket, the quality of lump, do you have deflectors in there? There's some variables there. And then what you do is you open it up all the way. Then you go high temp. Now, when you get up to something like this, even like the 450, you're probably gonna open up your bottom vent because you really wanna let the air flow, especially if you're trying to do like a 800 degree sear, open it all up top and bottom and let it roar away so you can get some nice sear on your steak. Or if you're doing a high temp uh, pizza, you'll need that. But the point here is that you can get a lot of variations just from this top dome, not touching the bottom. Now the thing what happens here is that people tend to make an adjustment and they do two mistakes. They make an adjustment that's too big and they make too many adjustments too soon. The secret here is that a little bit goes a long way. So if I'm off by 10, 20 degrees, I'm probably only gonna move this like an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch tops. Then once you make the change, you've gotta wait 10 minutes. It's gonna take a little while before it's gonna come up to temperature and it's gonna settle in. So what happens is people make a little change, they wait two minutes, they make another little change, they wait two minutes, they make a little change, all of a sudden they get up their temperature like, yeah, I'm there, and then it keeps going going. And the problem with something like this is that once you overshoot your temperatures, it's very hard to get it down. Now, if you go over by 25, it's not that bad, but start going over by 50 or 100 and you're in trouble. So the secret here is small adjustments and take your time, wait 10 minutes between adjustments. You're gonna learn it over time. You're gonna figure out you know, roughly where the lines are and what temperature that works for you. Uh, but the thing here is that if you get it overheated, you can deal with it. Here's how, close our bottom vent, close our top vent, wait five minutes, take this, open it up all the way, let all that heat out, Close it again, wait another five, 10 minutes, open it up again and do that three or four times and that'll help it come down. You're basically, you're putting out the fire. After the fourth time, depending on how much you overshoot it, you're gonna have to play with it. It'll come back down and then you can open up an inch in the bottom and then start lower than you were before, let it come up to temperature, let it set in and then you can get it dialed back in again. So number five and six really go hand in hand. I will talk about them individually. Number five is using too much wood. Let's look at what we got here. Here's some wood. This happens to be uh, pecan wood. This is from cutting edge firewood. We use these guys for years, five or six years. Uh, what I like about them is that they've got lots of variety, but they also have huge chunks of wood. And what happens here is smoke should be treated like seasoning, right? If you put too much salt, too much hot sauce, or too much seasoning on a piece of meat, you're gonna ruin it. Smoke is the exact same thing. You can over smoke and you will over smoke if you use too much wood. So you've gotta think about it as a seasoning and treat it accordingly. 
lots of people I meet don't say that they don't like smoked food. And the reason why is because they've had something that has been horribly oversmoked or someone struggled with number six, which we'll talk about in a second. Now it's funny because recently I had family come here. One of the, the couple, my step aunt came here uh, from Calgary and we we're talking on FaceTime maybe a month before they're coming. She's like, listen, one thing I want is I want a steak. Other than that, your food's great, and I want anything as long as it's not smoked. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you've been here before. Do you remember who you're talking to? <laughs> but the reason why is because she's had a lot of things that were oversmoked, and it's just ruined it for her. But I'll tell you what, I made a ton of smoked food, and because it was done right, she absolutely loved it. So if you have a family member who does not like smoke, uh, you can bring them back into it if you do it right and you don't overdo it. But what happens here is people think more smoke, more better. And that is not the case, right? General rule of thumb, the max that you want to have is 10% wood. So if you look at your basket here, you know, if it's a full basket, you can get three of these big chunks. Little side tip here, Komodos burn front to back. So one, two, three. So as, it's, as that fire is burning, you're gonna get more wood, but don't overdo it. Number six, same wood, different problem. Now, the other thing that people do is they think when they think of smoked food, they think of seeing smoke and seeing more smoke is better. It is exactly the opposite. So when you put wood that starts to smolder in a Kamal style cooker, in the beginning, you're gonna see some billowing white smoke, almost white like the clouds. You will no notice it because it is thick and bright white. That smoke is smoke that you don't wanna smoke in. You can use a little bit in the beginning, uh, but you don't wanna smoke it in long term. That is dirty smoke, right? You hear a term called blue smoke, and once you see it, you'll understand it. But what happens here is you'll see wisps, maybe of white smoke once in a while, but you'll see wisps come out here and there'll be this blue tint to it. And that is smoking. So, you know, when you walk out your patio, use your nose, you'll smell that smoke flavor. You might not see a lot of smoke, uh, but that is what we call clean smoke. And that is putting a nice, clean smoke flavor into your meat. A lot of times when people don't like smoked food, if, if it, you know, maybe it was clean smoke, but they just used a ton of wood. The other thing that can happen is someone didn't know what they were doing and they cooked in a lot of that white smoke because it's bitter and acrid and it tastes terrible. It really ruins it. I mean, if you're, you know, someone who likes a lot of smoke, you'll push through and maybe not think there's anything wrong with it, but everybody else who doesn't really like smoke the way that you do will think it's absolutely terrible. So don't do that to your guests. So the little caveat here is that Let's say that you're going through a cook, you're in a brisket cook, and you're not smelling any smoke, you're not seeing any smoke for an extended period of time, and you wanna add some more smoke. You can open it up and put a chunk on top if you want. It will be white for about 10, 15 minutes, and then it'll clean up. That's not gonna ruin an entire meal, right? If you have smoke, dirty smoke for a small fraction, you know, 30 minutes out of a 10 minute cook, or 10 hour cook, it's not gonna matter. But if you're doing an hour cook and it's all white, it's gonna be absolutely terrible, right? So try and burn clean smoke. The easiest way to get clean smoke is to put these in the bottom, put some lump over top of it, light it up, and what happens is as these smolder, the smoke goes through some hot lump and kind of double burns that smoke and you'll get some really clean smoke. It just so happens I have a bonus tip for you. Before we can get into that, I gotta talk about the contest. So on my channel, we do a contest every video. All you gotta do is you gotta be subscribed to the channel, you gotta like the video, and you have to comment down below with two hashtags. For this video, we'll use hashtag Kamado Joe, hashtag six mistakes, comment down below. At the end of the month, I do a Thursday video where I do four drawings for the month or a Tuesday video with four drawings for the month. And I do four drawings for a $25 gift card to appybq.com. And if you happen to be a Patreon member, it starts at five bucks, I'll double it and I'll make it 50 bucks. So our bonus tip here is not a mistake, it's just something to help step up your game. And it really comes down to having a good thermometer. A lot of times people look at recipes and they take away the time and they don't think about the temperature. There's so many variables when it comes to cooking food. Thickness, quality of food, temperature that it's done at, 
Um, you know, it's, it's endless. You really got to get yourself a good thermometer. This one is from Chef Temp. Any digital thermometer will work. Uh, make sure you get yourself a quality one that doesn't have too many variations. This one will get temperatures in about a second. It's got a lighted display. I do have a 10% discount code for that down below. You can click the link. Um, but do not cook the time. Cook the temperature and learn your temperatures, right? Steak, depending how you want it, is summer, you're gonna pull it off between 120 and 135 for the most part, right? There is carryover, you have to allow for that. Chicken, many people cook it right till 165 because that's when chicken is done. The problem there is, is that it probably carries over to 175, maybe 180, depending on what temperature you're cooking at. Now all of a sudden you got a dried out breast and people are like, chicken's always dry. Chicken's not dry, you just gotta learn how to cook it properly. So do yourself a favor, get yourself a good thermometer and learn to cook the temperatures. Use the time as a guideline, but remember every barbecue cook is different. Every piece of meat is different. So learn to cook the temp and it'll really help you out. Hopefully you got some value out of this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down there. Leave a comment with the two hashtags so I can draw your name in the future. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you soon.